Psychiatry's origin as a distinct discipline of medicine. Hey guy, didn't see you there. From the very moment of its birth, psychiatry has had a bit of a rodeo. With a lot of disagreements, it was somewhat associated as a pseudo-medicine. In the 19th century, various European universities began to observe patients with abnormal behavior. Once these patients died, they were subjected to autopsy dissections of their bodies. Physicians looking through microscopes at brain sections and tissues of the deceased patients discovered to their surprise that mental disorders appeared to fall into two unique categories. The first category consisted of conditions where there was visible damage to the brain, while studying the brains of individuals who suffered from dementia, doctors noticed that the brains looked smaller and were marked with dark clumps of protein. Other physicians noticed that patients who had suddenly lost movement in their limbs often had bulging obstructions or pink bluer stains in their brains. On other occasions, bright shiny pink tumors were discovered. The French anatomist Paul Broca analyzed the brains of two men with a combined spoken vocabulary of less than seven words. One man was named Tan because that was the only word he could say. Broca discovered that each man had signs of a stroke in exactly the same area on the left frontal lobe. Little by little, many disorders became understood, and recipes for identifying these disorders were created. Some mentions include Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Pick's, and Huntington's disease. But when studying the brains of patients who had suffered from other kinds of mental disorders, physicians failed to detect any physical abnormalities, no lesions, and no neural abnormalities. The brains of these patients had no features that stood out. They were completely identical to the brains of someone who had never demonstrated any behavioral dysfunction. These mysterious conditions form the second category of mental disorders, psychosis, manias, phobias, melancholia, obsessions, and hysteria. The discovery that some mental disorders had a recognizable biological basis while others didn't led to the establishment of two distinct disciplines. Medical doctors who worked with disorders of the brain which they could see, they became known as neurologists. Then you had the doctors who worked with the invisible disorders of the mind. They became known as psychiatrists. You can imagine the controversy psychiatry carried on its shoulders. As a specialty that took charge of the diseases that by their own definition had no identifiable physical cause, Funny thing is, by the way, a little fun fact too, the term psychiatry literally means medical treatment of the soul, created by this German physician. With a non-physical entity as a subject, psychiatry became a playground for scammers and pseudoscientists. Say for example if cardiology had split into two specialties, sort of like one dealing with the literal physical heart problems and the other group treating broken hearts in the spiritual sense. Don't you think that the latter would be a good place for someone to practice bizarre theories and fraud? Franz Mesmer was one of the earliest physicians who wanted to explain and treat mental disorders. In the 1770s, Franz rejected the general idea that religious and moral grounds were the reasons for mental illness. Franz was in favor of a more psychological explanation. One could argue that he is the world's first psychiatrist. Unfortunately, his psychological explanation was that mental illness could be related to animal magnetism, which he described as invisible energy moving through several thousand magnetic channels in our bodies. He believed that it was the cause of many medical illnesses. 250 years later, we've gotten a bit smarter, but we can imagine that these magnetic channels are a bunch of neurons with electric impulses charging from synapse to synapse. But the discovery of neurons, even synapses as we know them today, they were discovered in 1877, 100 years after Franz Mesmer. During Mesmer's time, the idea of animal magnetism seemed as hard to believe and futuristic as if Elon Ready? Musk tweeted, You can teleport from Paris to Japan in a matter of seconds right now. Franz believed that mental illness was caused by blocked animal magnetism flow, whatever that means. Sharing never stops, it's the gift that gives, so let's all share because we care, there it is. The idea behind Mesmer's theory was by removing this block, you could live problem free. To do this, patients would need to be in contact with the powerful animal magnetism master, like for example Franz Mesmer. By touching patients in the right places and in the right way, like for example a pinch here, a caress there, maybe whispering a sweet lullaby in their ears. Franz believed that he could restore the proper flow of magnetic energy in their bodies. I have to say, very creative. Uh, nice. The idea behind Mesmer's treatment was to create a sort of crisis. For example, treating an insane person would require inducing a kind of madness. Curing a depressed person, one had to first make him suicidal. Now that sounds kind of f***ed up. Emotional, damn it! While the idea might seem absurd to the untrained person, Mesmer believed that his mastery of magnetic therapy allowed these induced crises to unfold under his control and without any danger to the patient. Here's a record of Mesmer treating an army surgeon for kidney stones from 1779. After several turns around the room, Mr. Mesmer unbuttoned the patient's shirt and, moving back somewhat, placed his finger against the part affected. My friend felt a tickling pain. Mr. Mesmer then moved his finger perpendicularly across his abdomen and chest, 
and the pain followed the finger exactly. He then asked the patient to extend his index finger and pointed his own finger toward it at a distance, whereupon my friend felt an electric tingling at the tip of his finger, which penetrated the whole finger toward the palm. Mesmer then seated him near the piano, he had hardly begun to play when my friend was affected emotionally, trembled, lost his breath, changed color, and felt pulled toward the floor. In this state of anxiety, Mr. Mesmer placed him on a couch so that he was in less danger of falling, and he brought in a maid who he said was anti-magnetic. When her hand approached my friend's chest, everything stopped in an instant, and my colleague touched and examined his stomach with astonishment. The sharp pain had suddenly ceased. Mr. Mesmer told us that a dog or a cat would have stopped the pain as well as the maid did. Nice. After Mesmer performed several miracle cures using his magnetic powers, word spread around pretty quick in Europe. Hmm. Magnetism. You know, every time I say it, I just think of Magneto. Stop Anyways, one of Mesmer's famous patients was Francesca Osterlin, a friend of the Mozart family, <laughs> where he allegedly restored her vision. Is it just me or is Mesmer just like Jesus 2.0? Mesmer was even invited to give his opinion on the exorcisms carried out by a Catholic priest named Johann Josef Gassner. Pretty ironic, considering one self-deluded healer was summoned to make sense of another self-deluded healer. This, this, this is not okay. This is camping to stop now. Mesmer came through and announced that even though Gasser was devoted to his religious beliefs and his exorcisms were quote-unquote effective, they only worked because the priest had a high level of animal magnetism. As his fame grew, Mesmer ended up in Paris. Even though famous, he stayed humble and treated both the wealthy and the average fellow on the streets. Booyakasha! So, to all you lot watching this, but mainly to the normal people, respect. We're sad. With his self-proclaimed mystical powers, Mesmer's fame grew and grew. You know, this story kind of reminds me of someone else in today's society, just not with the same good intentions. I wonder who? Hmm. King Louis XVI established a scientific board that included hey, yep boy Benjamin Franklin to investigate animal magnetism. The committee ultimately published a report disproving animal magnetism. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Saying it was complete BS. Here is a quote from a 1784 message from Benjamin Franklin to William Temple Franklin. Some think it will put an end to mesmerism, but there is a wonderful deal of credulity in the world, and deceptions as absurd have supported themselves for ages. Anyways, thanks for watching. This was Dr. Brucella. Peace out, family. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Tamina, mina, eh, eh, waka, waka, eh, eh, tamina, mina, zangadewa, ah, na, 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 zing, gangadam, bada.